Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Canva Templates for Beginners series. Today I'm going to be going over some of Canva's um, features just to elaborate a little bit more on the pictures, photograph aspects, we'll be looking at the text options available, how to add a text box, we'll look at the QR code and how the function and how that works and the auto save and we'll be changing the font colours to show you how all of that works too. Um, so the other thing that I would like to do in this video is show you how to export the template as a PNG which effectively means you're just exporting it as an image as it would appear uh, in its end um, version. So you know if it's a printed document it's not going to have bleed on it, it's just going to look as it should and then uh, this process is exactly the same for if you're working with um, templates for Instagram posts or Facebook stories and Instagram stories or YouTube thumbnails, any of them things, whether it's a leaflet or a digital product template that, you, that you're working with, they all get exported in the same way. So that's handy to know that it's transferable across all um, folks or template types. So uh, first thing I would like to address is um, the, with a template, say you've purchased a template from outside of Canva and it comes with images included like I have to, um, you want to make sure that you have a backup copy of your file uh, because you could accidentally come out of your file while you're working on it and made a change that you wish you hadn't and then that work basically automatically saves in Canva. So you can change this auto save time here you can either make it less, you know, quicker time or a longer time waiting time for you to, um, for it to auto save. I mean, it is handy that it does that, and I do recommend saving as you go along. And I've said it before: file save at the very start. However, before you start making any changes, let's make a copy, um, because worst case scenario, you may not be able to get these images or anything like them again within the elements section for free um, you know if, if the provider that I was able to get them from doesn't work through Canva but there are plenty that, that are on here that, that you can um, however let us let me show you um, what to do first before you even start editing you go file make a copy from the options choose choose make a copy so you can see now this hold it copy of the beauty station leaflet and then it's got that here as well um, what you want to do next is go back to your home screen you can close all of these Canva automatically opens a new tab every time it moves from one screen to another um, so we go to projects where our files are shown and we can see that the most recent files are both showing. So they're showing us two, two files now um, and we're going to just put this copy into a new folder. So you can rename the file here. You can rename all of your files if you wish um, and you can do that here. I'm not going to do that right now um, but you could and then you're going to move it to a folder the copy and we're going to create a new folder and put it just here where it can be seen straight away. Let's call this original templates and we're going to add two new folder because we're moving it. So now when you go down here you'll see there's a new folder with the other folders and when you click in there this is where you're going to find your original template. So if you go back to projects here there's the uh, other files that are all loose on the projects in the projects area. You could also create other folders for them if you know if this was your display and do that. Um, so we're not going to use the copy, we're just going to ignore that and go back to the first one that was open. And I'm going to start by showing you now. Uh, we've already shown how to adjust the time on the auto save. Um, remembering that you should really save before you leave um, so basically when you click a text box here now we're looking at font color you can see here it's got text color uh, coming up 
up on the label uh, and it's showing the actual colour for the text in that box. And then this one is now showing two colours within the box because there are two colours within that text box. Um, and here we have um, different text option. This is clear, this is white and then purple. So basically when you click this box, it will bring up all of the colours from within this document. It will show you the colours that originally came with the document that were in our original design. The clever thing about this is it also shows you all the other colours you could work with from within the images. So if you want to see every colour palette that they've created on the basis of each image within this document, you can go see all and you can pull them all through here. And you can use every single one of these colours in this design if you wish to change it. So you might prefer to use these one of these pinks for the text if you are happy with the pink. Um, you might want to change the purple out altogether for a different colour. So it's entirely up to you. You could simply, if you wanted to, go back here. You could simply change, reverse the colours around. You might prefer to have purple as the main title and then for, the, for all the main titles and then pink for the body. So let's see how that could look. So you could just click more than one box at a time. So we're going to change those two to purple. So just by selecting both the boxes, you hold the shift key down. So you click one box, hold the shift key, click another box, and you can actually change them at the same time without highlighting the text inside. And all you would do is click the A and choose the colour that you wish. So if we were going to change that around, let's see, inside this box we would um, ultimately just highlight the text and change it as we go. So this remains open over here because I haven't closed it. Highlight that, highlight this. And I'm not worried about things being saved um, while I'm inside the work area because I can undo it. But if I accidentally came out, this might not have been uh, ideally what I wanted to save. So it's good that I have the, the backup copy in place uh, for, for that eventuality. Um, you can also copy information from one file to another. So if you had both uh, images open, uh, both, both leaflets open in tabs up here, you could copy from one and then copy it into the next design on the other page. So if you did lose an image or something like that, that would be really useful. Paste it in. So like that, I nearly pushed home instead of undo. So let's just um, make sure I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. So in here, selecting the text that we'd like to change. We're changing the titles to purple and the body text pink. There we go. Body text to pink and purple. So you get the idea. This is how it would work if you were changing colours. And again, the photo colours are here and the default colours you can choose from here as well. Uh, anything else is pretty much, um, you know, you have to pay for pro option for Canva if you want more than this um, but you can also type in colours up here blue black <laughs> green orange so you get the idea so you can choose anything from uh, what, what shows up okay so exit that we're going to undo what I've done here so far. Bring it back to how it was in the beginning. So I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to show you under the elements section, we're going to look at the images briefly. Um, so one thing I didn't do before, let's just see, when I was looking at uh, replacing and rearranging images on one of the earlier videos was go into it in a little bit more depth. So when we place an image into um, the bounding box of an image box. So obviously this one I've got selected here at the moment. I'm just going to say 
choose one of these plants. So you could have a plant business and you might decide to use this image. So as I previously shown it, you can click it and drop it on the page. Um, what you might want to do is add this one to an image box. So let's just say we're going to put it into this central one here. So uh, as previously shown, you just basically uh, left click, hold down on the object, move it around to a which founding box you want it to go into. And then you just let go once it's showing in the image box. So that's now replaced the image that's in there. So, you know, like I was saying, if you did want to use those images and you didn't want to lose them, at least you've got the backup copy. Um, and then now this isn't looking great inside here. So what you want to do is double click on it and then you can use your uh, arrow keys on your keyboard or you can use your left key down on your mouse to move this in whichever option is available, direction is possible. So that's looking okay that way. And then you let go and there you go. So you can basically reposition your image within the box uh, given the space around the outside of the image um, and obviously the shape of the bounding box it's in, you'd need to take that into consideration. So that's one thing you can do. Um, another thing you can do, this is a nice white background here, so let's stick with the, the idea that it's a um, plant shop or a florist of some kind and we're just going to click that once. If we right click on this image, I'm going to set this as a background image. So here, when you right click on the image, set image as background. So you can do it this way. And then if you wanted to, you could keep these other um, images on the thing, or you could just take them off and delete them. So what you would do is you'd select the image and you could go here to the trash button, or you could push delete the usual way and now you have to delete again to remove the actual image box if you don't want it so two three delete image delete frame so we're deleting both basically and um, this one you know maybe you want it to stay in there bearing in mind to always you know because this one is for print purposes to keep everything within uh, the margin area so that you're safe so okay so um, another thing you can do um, you know obviously we could change all the colors now if we wanted to but this one here actually um, you can change to any of the colors available or, or you know like I've shown already to search them but again now you've got other images to choose from colors that could be more suitable might want to change to any of these or you might not <laughs> just to show you how it works on an object as well as an image uh, as text and then um, we can go to here to the text feature you can add a text box and it's really clever because it actually carries through the font that you're already using within your design and then if you were um, wanting to increase the size of your text box you can drag it out if you want to change the font so it's obviously not the color that we um, have already on the page but you can choose your color from those if you wanted to we could go back to our original colors or we could choose this one which is what we've just put in down here I'm just going to move that so we can see it maybe you have a special offer that you'd like to add and then if you wanted to add that to anywhere on your page that will resize it all you have to do is that so basically when you enter the text it it resizes the box itself however you can just use these handles and then reposition so wherever you want it say if you wanted that there and if you didn't want to use that or put in another shape you can add shapes um, and elements 
yourself from what's available. Obviously, I've said before that the crown is paid for parts or aspects of canvas, so anything without um, that would be better uh, in terms of, or useful in terms of um, resize. Um, and then I'm going to resize this and because I'm resizing it, it's changing the size of the fonts automatically and again just repositioning so you could do something like that and then um, another thing you can do is there are pre-made text combinations here which you can all hit it independently you could choose these, I mean I'm going to use this one and then just to show you, um, you can obviously just retype They do have some, um, obviously I'm not going to do that, <laughs> so I'm going to delete it, but um, you could use things like this, uh, these features are quite handy, and there's lots of different options um, to choose from, so if I come out of recently used, you get a good idea through scrolling down, um, you could click something like this, and you could, for example, remove the text, Drag that, drop it in, obviously bearing in mind the, um, the margins again, you want to make sure that your text um, doesn't go off the page. So I'm just going to click that handle and resize, bring it down, and that's quite cute how that's worked out, isn't it? And then here, just deleting this off. A select box. So you can see how a leaflet design can change significantly um, by incorporating some other elements into your designs. Um, and then last but not least, I'm going to show you the QR code function. Now you can enter the URL uh, for your say you say you have an online store. Um, or a website that you'd like to use. You could use other URLs, for example, it could be your Facebook page URL. So you would do www.facebook.com forward slash um, whatever your handle, your username is. Um, so, but what I'm going to do is I'll just show you. This can work anyway. You can do the HTTPS version followed by the www. I've checked all of these already. Um, our website um, and you can change the colour here so you can customise and I would like to use say this pink to make it pop so the background colour I'm going to keep white and the foreground this is the background colour with the edge and then I'm going to change the black to the um, code for the pink so I'll show you how to work that out if you click the pink text and you go here and you click this or you hover over it it will show you the hex code BC007C um, I've already written this down earlier on so I'm just acting my QR code and you see it saved the information that I've already put in there I'm going to click this it's going to open up the colour for me to put the hex code in and I'm just going to do GC007C and you can see that the colour has changed here in the QR code box so I'm happy with that and then uh, before you actually produce 
or add it to your leaflet, you can actually check whether or not it's working uh, before you, you know, entrust it into actually being printed uh, later on or whenever you're due to do that. But if you want to check the QR code, you can just scan it with a QR code reader from your smartphone um, to see that it brings you to the exact page that you want it to. Bear in mind, uh, we work with QR codes in my business, so uh, just one thing to bear in mind is the longer the QR code is, uh, the smaller the bits get within the QR code, which means it's harder for it to be scanned appropriately. So that's something to bear in mind. So the shorter, the better. You can do this in different formats. So you can do www.busyclients.co.uk or you can do uh, busyclients.co.uk as well, um, just like this. And all of those I've checked and they all work in the same way. Um, so then you would click generate QR code or actually the margins I'm happy with but just to show you the rim of the actual QR code gets smaller or bigger but you want it roughly about number two and then you click generate QR code and you can incorporate the QR code into your leaflet and you can put it wherever you wish on your page but basically that will obviously bring anyone, you know, you, you can use QR codes for so many different things. And if you're interested in finding out more about uh, QR codes and customised QR codes, you can find out more on our website anyway. Um, but you could use these for running competitions, contact details, all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, so just to show you um, how these features work. And if you were happy with this, um, leaflet uh, as your end leaflet um, you could um, then save your work and share so what we're going to do is I have a copy of this so I know it doesn't matter what I've done you would normally file save if you were happy with your leaflet and then you would go share to download so similar to when we were preparing a document for print in the previous video, now PNG suggested is already selected, that's fine. We're going to download it and uh, just, just to again reiterate that the QR code is inside of the margins to ensure that um, it's printable. Uh, you know, QR codes can be used on digital products as well, they're not just for print purposes. So um, that's a very handy feature. Um, we don't need to change any settings. We just click download on the PNG. And what that will do is print an image, or not print an image, produce an image here that will have uh, the, it will be the end result effectively. Um, and that will not include this area here. So it will look a bit closer, this part up here is going to be cut away and so is this but this is how it intends we intend for it to look as its end result so i'm just opening that and that's what you get obviously um if you were sticking with the original design you'd have had a beauty business and you'd have um changed the name and the information to suit your own business and um you can also delete things like the Facebook and the Instagram and incorporate um, those other icons that are suitable or relevant to your business um, which are easily found uh, under the media centres for each of those platforms if you're looking for them um, to incorporate yourselves. Um, so that's what I've got for you. I hope that you found this series helpful. Um, we've gone over um, Obviously, in today's uh, video, we've gone over how to make the, the very first thing is before you start editing is to make a copy, very important, of your original template if you've purchased it from outside of Canva, especially if it has images in it. Uh, in the previous videos, um, you were shown how to locate your file once you first start using it. Um, you were shown how to edit text, you've been shown how to align text and text boxes and images, you've been shown how to replace and rearrange images um, and to upload your own images as well 
uh, has all been shown as part of this series, uh, as well as how to prepare for print, how to work with your document if uh, it fits for print purposes, best practice. Um, and today, everything that we've covered in today's video, such as color palettes, changing object colors, incorporating some of the useful features from Canva, um, and the auto save function. So I hope that you've found all of this really helpful and I'll be back with you for some uh, useful videos on PDFs um, working with PDFs and interactive PDFs and things like that will coming up soon. Thanks for being here.